Hey, welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage, Mike Montanari. Whoo, man, if you're here for the first time, you missed a ton of rework on our baby right here. And if you're returning, welcome back. And I promised you a surprise last episode. As you probably guessed from the title, those of you that are really smart, we are putting in a master cylinder today for a clutch. Yes, I'm upgrading. Oh man, that's why I wanted to do this before the engine was in. Good timing to do that. And that's actually not the surprise. I promised a surprise. Here's the surprise. Ba bam Upgrade! I can't wait. That's right, boys and girls. It's time to upgrade. Now here's the fun part. I've never done this before. I've never touched a Tremec. I don't know what's involved. So this is going to be a great learning experience for everyone. Uh, mostly me. <laughs> but I love challenges. That's how I built the car. I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't. And frankly, the people that think I'm an expert, I uh, appreciate that, but I'm not. And uh, this is going to be a fun learning experience for everyone, I hope. Whew. So I'm going to go ahead and tear into the box, see what, what we got to do, uh, read the instructions 18,000 times, and uh, we'll get at it. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're going to put the master cylinder in today. It looks like this. It's from Willwood. It goes mounts on the firewall, obviously. And I figured what better time to do it, the engine out of the engine bay. We can get in there, see what kind of tools we need. Um, this kit is optional. You do not have to get a hydraulic clutch for your Tremec. Um, but you can put a hydraulic clutch on almost anything, I think. I don't know. I've never done this before. So looking through the instructions... It looks like this is for a whole wide range of GM cars. So we got um, 67 to 69 Camaros and Firebirds, 68 to 82 Corvettes, 64 to 72 Chevelle, El Camino, GTOs, 442s, and GSs. So that'll be very relevant today. Uh, C10 trucks, you need some additional instructions, but a whole wide range of cars this can go on. So this should be um, good knowledge for everyone. Uh, for starters, we need to go take a look at our firewall because we have to drill some holes. Be right back. Hey guys, so I'm actually standing in my engine bay. <laughs> this is pretty cool. So nice to have a lift when you need one. So here's what we're looking at. The instructions say we have to drill out the three nuts, the current nuts, that are holding the plate on the inside firewall. That means I have to drop the car and uh, get inside it get and get in my favorite position which is underneath the dash oh joy okay guys i'm armed with my flashlight and here we go so it looks like we got to take our toe plate off right here and then we can start taking these 3 8 inch hex bolts off and it looks like we can drill from this side so we'll see how that goes. Tough. Now we can get at our bolts and take our shift linkage out. There we go. That's what it looks like. It's like a spring loaded cotter pin. All right. Shift linkage is out. Now let's get these three bolts out. Right, I'm liking this progress. This plate comes off. I just stuck on. Yeah. And there's, there's our boot. Just like that. So we have to drill. I think we have to drill through this plate. It's actually not clear in the instructions because this plate is two pieces. It holds the steering column. Frankly, I'm okay with drilling through it. I don't see why we can't. So, let's get going on the drilling. All right, guys, so with the drill, still have a little bit of a challenge because I can get this bottom one if I'm careful, careful not touching the clutch pedal. 
but I can't get at the other two. So I'm gonna have to look around my garage for some help. All right, team. So I went searching and I actually have this left over from a project I did in the house for some electrical work. I had to do some blind holes behind sheetrock and these are like extension rods for your drill. So I think I can we can use this and then that gives us like 14 inches. Knowing my luck, the drill is going to now hit the seat. So <laughs> let's go tr give it a shot. Hey guys, check it out. So that's against the, the volt hole. And it just touches the seat, and the seat's all the way back. But I think we have enough flex in this rod where I can actually straighten out, see how, how it flexes. So here we go. Oh, yeah. One done. All right, all right. Two done. All right, last one. It's a slot, so let's see how this let's see how this behaves. As figured. Hey guys, so what I did, I totally forgot to film it. Um, I came in at an angle to see if I could get some relief on that slot here, and it totally just chipped off, which is a godsend. So now we can go straight at it. Oh yeah, here we go. And we're done. Hey, good job team. Thanks for hanging in there. And uh, let's get this sucker mounted. All right team, here's what else we get to figure out. So we have to attach this, which is the new uh, push rod to our clutch pedal. And there are no instructions on how to make this mount, so that'll be fun to figure out. And then this just screws on, and we have to figure out the right length from the pivot point on the pedal to here. So we have a um, little slop, and it's also we need to make sure it's a direct line when we push on the pedal. Because if there's any off-center action or load it's called a side load you'll destroy the piston because in here it's not designed for a side load it's only it's only designed for an axial load so adding to the fun here's the plan of attack we're going to put this in firewall against uh, this cushion and then on the inside of the car we're going to put this on this is our uh, mounting plate and then we do washer lock washer nut and then we check our length and then we can tighten it down and these are 15 foot pound of torque be right back all right let's pray this fits without any other issues all right of course it doesn't fit all right guys here's the drama that we're having so here's the flange that matched to the firewall and you saw that I got one bolt in and the other two didn't match. Here's the retaining plate of the stock uh, boot and as you can tell it doesn't matter how I orient it the, the holes do not even come close to lining up. So I uh, I called Silver Sport and explained the situation. They looked at my account and said, oh my gosh, we sent you the bracket for a 64 to 67 GTO. The 68 and 69 is different. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so what they did say is they're going to send me a new bracket and the new bracket matches this one. And the difference is, besides the hole mounting, is that this is at an angle. So it's more like this as it goes through the firewall, which makes more sense because check out this the picture I took. I took this picture to explain my case with Silver Sport. And that's when all the things lined up and they said, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, 
you know, so they're sending me the stuff. That's great. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and, and put this back in the car and kind of mimic where I think it's going to be. And then we can play with how to mount our clevis to the pedal. So the other drama you guys probably saw in that picture was how do we bolt to the pedal? Because I didn't have enough room to put this in there. On that, on that clutch assembly, we have the pedal. And then there's an L, basically an L bracket that comes off it with a through hole. So, and then right next to it is the brake pedal with the brake light switch. There's not a lot of room here. This room right here is, is what I'm concerned about because if we, this shoulder of this bolt barely fits in there or the clevis barely fits in there. And we also have to contend with the angle that we have to shoot at the firewall, knowing that the new master cylinder that's coming is at a better angle. We, I'm still reluctant to use either way here. So what I did was I went to McMaster car and those of you in engineering purchasing know this company really well. You can find any kind of fastener you can think of. So I sourced these guys. I actually ordered these in the morning. I got them in the afternoon. That's pretty awesome. This pre-exists Amazon, by the way. So you can get these fasteners. I got this guy, shorter shoulder, uh, caught a different couple different lengths to play with. See that one's shorter than the other one, but the diameter is identical. It was five sixteenths. Look at that, perfect fit. And I can still use the same nut on the end. I even got longer fasteners for our brackets. So I don't have to fiddle around trying to get this thread started. So I got three more of these. 5 16 18 thread. And, uh, you know, awesome. Because I found this in the kit too. I think this bushing actually goes in here. So we can bolt in the bracket. Or the opposite way if we put the clevis here. Because our whole goal is to get this angle perfectly lined up. So either we mount on this side or we mount on this side with the clevis to figure out our angle to the master cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and get under the dash again and play with our different my different fasteners and this clevis and see what we uh, come up with. Hey guys, check it out. Your eyes are not deceiving you. This is the correct plate. I took a couple days off after filming the last little bit and uh, Silver Sport got this to me. So this is the correct bracket. This is the correct orientation for the master cylinder. It's all bolted in. And you remember when I showed you guys uh, the, the longer bolts that I bought? So the longer bolts I got from McMaster were two inches long. I used the standard one here because the two inch bolt actually hits the toe plate. So I used the standard bolt at the bottom. That's an inch and a quarter long. And this, these top two are two inches. And the reason I use the longer ones on top is when you try to mount this by yourself, you, it's impossible to put the sh all three short bolts in. So I did the two long bolts, tightened them up, and then put the third one in. Worked perfectly. And I also see that arrow I put on there. These are not symmetric. It's not a symmetric triangle. So I put it on the mounting plate, drew an arrow so I knew which way was facing us. And then that helps us mount the plate. Now we can put our connecting rod on to see where it lines up. And I could already tell it's in a pretty good spot to put our clevis right here on the inside of the bracket, which is what I drew on our little diagram. Um, but the challenge is this little hub. I can't get into the hole and I think it's because I had this powder coated so there's too much paint in this hole so now I have to get creative I either have to shave this guy down which I'll try first with some sandpaper see if it fits if I can't get it to fit I got to pull the pedals out and open up that hole so let's see what happens as I'm back uh, let's see if I sanded it down a little bit and still doesn't just slide in of course so instead of taking the pedals on I'm going to try something else 
I actually took one of my 3 8 inch bolts and I wrapped it in sandpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and use it as like a, a bore file and see if I can get in there and get some of that paint out. I'm just spinning it in the bore. I can see paint coming off on the sandpaper. Okay, let's see. That didn't quite work. All right, guys, so here's plan B. Actually, are we on plan C? I think we're on plan C. This is where we have to stick our hub in this hole. It's close, but as I measure it, it's a little over 400 thousandths. And then the hub is four and a quarter. Close, but not close enough. So I think I'm going to take a drill bit, see if I can open that up a little bit more, and see what happens. All right, here we go. All right, guys, on second thought, I'm going to use my die grinder. I don't want to side load my drill bit too much. You really shouldn't do that. So i got my die grinder in here, see if I can open it up. All right, guys, let's see if we can get this in here. Hey, yes. It's in. So ironically, in this kit came a shorter shoulder bolt. And that's so funny how I ordered shorter shoulders, but with a shorter head. So this is a little test fit. Perfect. But I'm going to use my, my shorter shoulder or my shoulder head on there just to prevent any interference with the brake so finally all right guys i got the pedal back in and i got the fastener in and as you can see i had to use the i'm glad i bought these uh short shoulder bolts because the bolt that came with the kit was too long and i didn't like the size of the head so i went with these short ones and I will put the McMaster car part number in the description so you guys can get it if you have a 69 or a 68. But check out the clearance there. You see where the nut is right here? And here's the uh, brake light switch. Got like an eighth of an inch in between there. But it's working. Now when you set up your stroke for your pedal, you want to make sure that when the pedal comes all the way back that it's not touching this pad because you want the master cylinder to control full stroke so I picked the point where when it comes all the way back it doesn't touch it's all the way back and then when I go all the way down I also don't touch the, the toe plate and that's how you do it so this was a pain in the ass Guys, that was borderline ridiculous putting that master cylinder in. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, we're not done. We're not done. I just wanted to summarize what was going on here. So this is the bolt that came in the new kit. The original kit for the 64 to 67 GTO had a longer bolt. That clearly didn't fit. And then they sent this shorter one with the 68, 69. And I thought it was still too long. And I replaced it with a shorter version of this. And I'll put the part number down below. But this is the, the other one I bought that was a little bit longer. It's still too long. So the other one is like an eighth inch shorter basically on the end. That's got the clearance on the brake pedal. Um, and you can also get a longer uh, drill bit. So get like a 12 inch long drill bit. And you'll be fine. Now the rest of this video... I actually filmed already before I got the new master cylinder, so that's why I mentioned we're waiting on the new master cylinder. But here's how you put in the reservoir. See you in a minute. All right, team. So now that we have the drama behind us, we can mount our reservoir, which looks like this. It also comes with a bracket, and the bracket has mounting holes. You can even use one of your... Um, 
master cylinder bolts like on the other side, but I can't. I have this uh, aluminum flange on my um, hydro boost system, so I'm going to go ahead and look up towards the firewall somewhere and and mount it probably up back here. I'll I'll change the camera angle. And what I did was I went searching in my vast array of fasteners, which you guys that are in the middle of projects know that you have a ton of fasteners. Um, so here's uh, one of the sheet metal screws. It fits perfectly. So I'm going to mount this directly to the firewall. So I'll change views and uh, bust out that drill. I think I want to put this roughly right here. I'm going to put a piece of tape right there. All right, I'm going to take my level. There's our level line. Two done. All right, guys. Done with the master cylinder. Put the reservoir in. Waiting for our official bracket from Silver Sport. So we can run our... Uh, our reservoir line. I already have the other line run and it works fine. Oh wow. Assuming there's no more drama with that, this will be the end of this video. <laughs> Lessons learned. Before you drill your holes, make sure your brackets line up. If they don't line up, call the manufacturer. I almost made the mistake of making more holes to get that bracket to work. That would have pissed me off. Oh, okay. Next episode. Subscribe because I'm going to start on the Tremec install. There's a couple things I want to do before the engine goes in so we can tackle that and then put the engine in. So that's a whole other video. Again, thanks for hanging out. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit like. And until next time, build them fast and drive them faster. See ya. Ah!